The city of Utrecht is known as one of the great cultural centres of the Netherlands. Home to medievalist architecture and bustling university life, but just a short 15 minute drive from the cobble street to the old city lies one of the most picturesque inland courses you'll ever find. Utrecht's golf club, De Pan, is the second oldest golf club in the country, having been founded as the Doomshire Golf Club in 1894. And in 1926, the club moved from Doom to its present site, reformed as Utrecht Golf Club de Pan, and the club commissioned Harry Colt to design their course. As soon as you arrive at de Pan, you can feel the intimacy. There's no grand, oversized clubhouse, but instead a collection of understated thatched barns arranged in a small courtyard lying amidst the first and tenth tees. Like many Dutch clubs, it's a welcoming place with a diverse and buoyant membership, all bound by a love for the sport. There's no pretense or sense of superiority, despite being home to one of the finest courses in continental Europe. In the first decades of the 20th century, Colt had established himself as the preeminent name in golf course design, not just in Britain, but globally. And his work at Japan is surely a testament to the vision and craft that he had developed. The land is only a modest 50 hectares in size, and yet you play through the sand hills, heather and pines, not once feeling claustrophobic, or that there's anything contrived here. In his typically brisk fashion, Colt walked the land at Japan and staked the course before refining his designs back in England. Colt worked very fast. Uh, you see, he came and... Um he walked through the through the country and in his mind already he saw, saw the possibilities. And I recently read a story of Swinley Forest, which was about the same. He walked through the forest and he said, here we'll come. And he started with the past threes. And then from the past threes, he developed the other courses. Uh, 27, 28, uh, he designed the first nine holes. And there was a discussion about who would uh, do the construction because he liked somebody from England but uh, the firm Copain was chosen a very famous Dutch uh, garden architect and developer the first nine holes were opened and everybody was very happy and uh, uh, very soon the club decided to develop the second nine holes which were opened in 1932 like most cult courses in the Netherlands it remains true to his original work, with very few changes to the routing. The first hole begins in close proximity to the clubhouse, a gentle par 5 opener, allowing you to settle into your round and take in the full beauty of the surroundings, a hallmark of Colt's design philosophy, with more than just a subtle nod to rye. From there you gently weave and work your way through the trees and heathland, and on every tee box you are greeted with a fresh challenge each asking a different question. The topography of the land, coupled with the relatively small size of the site, makes Depan a comfortable walk with natural transitions from green to tea. And yet, the rolling sandy terrain has created gentle undulations in many of the fairways and natural runoffs and contours to defend the greens, somewhat reminiscent of those courses which lie in the Surrey Berkshire Sandbelt in England. Such is the quality of the course, it's a difficult task to single out individual holes at Japan for being particularly standout. After playing the gently downhill, mid-length par 3 third hole, the dogleg fourth plays to a green pit severely front to back, with extreme contours on either side funneling the ball away from you, requiring the better player to control the distance of their approach shot through the air, while still allowing the high handicapper to run the ball in along the ground if they choose. The 6th and 7th holes could be the strongest back-to-back -back par 4s you'll find anywhere in the world. The 6th plays over 400 yards requiring a committed drive, played blind over the rumpled fairway ahead of you, and then a semi-blind approach to a green tucked amongst heathery mounds. The 7th is a classic half par. A ball worked left to right with a longer club might scamper its way up close to the green, but with pines and heather lurking close by, the more sensible option could be an iron for safety. At some courses, the tenth hole can feel like an afterthought, a means of getting from A to B, or simply getting back out of the course and away from the house. 
but at Japan, the tenth might be the best of them all. A quirky feature is the traffic light, which you press on the tee to alert those walking between the courtyard and the car park that you'll soon be playing a shot over their head. And as you step onto the elevated tee box, the shape of the challenge ahead is in full view. The green lies 350 yards or so away, seemingly perched in the middle of a V created by two crashing mounds covered with heather. The fairway is heavily undulating and it's easy to play your tee shot from too far down, leaving an awkward downslope from which you must play your approach to the small green. The 11th is a brilliant par 5, tempting the longer hitters into being brave and playing their tee shots over the heather to the right. A long carry, but one which gives you a chance of finding the green surface in two. 15 is a beautiful but challenging par 3, where any shot that is less than good will leave you an up and down, somewhere between challenging and nigh on impossible. Colt's brilliant trickery, plain to see. The 17th is another exciting half bar hole, teeing off from one of the highest points on the course with the green tucked just 300 yards away between several bunkers and mounds of heather. There's a chance for you to be a hero, but also gives you an opportunity to fail miserably. But for all its great golf holes when viewed in isolation, Japan is the rare breed of course, where the sum is greater than its parts. A collection of holes that when packaged together elevate it even further. It's a harmonious, peaceful and natural routing, easy on the legs and taxing on the brain, which leaves you holing out an 18 with a thirst to walk straight back onto the first. To achieve this on a relatively small parcel of dense forest land on the city limits, nearly a hundred years ago and yet today remain as relevant as it was is nothing short of miraculous. The architect Guy Campbell, known for his work at Princes and Deal, perhaps summed it up best when he wrote in the Times in 1939. All players have conjured a vision of their ideal inland course. The course shall incorporate all the fine features of a lynx, but with the light and shade and the aromatic scents, the vistas and backgrounds of the red, bold, green-headed pines. A course where the fairways are spacious, where an erring shot will not be lost. Japan has every one of these rare qualities. As a dream course, it fits the bill. <laughs>